Hello, everybody, um, and uh, welcome to this series of three lectures about uh, St. Colm McGill. It's the uh, 1500th anniversary of the birth of St. Colm McGill. And I want to thank uh, Donegal uh, County Library, who have organised this and invited me to speak uh, on about these matters. And as we were discussing it, um, I thought as it is the library that's um, organising the event, it would be appropriate to talk about St. Colm Killam books. He's, there's lots of connections between St. Colm Killam books. So in, this is the first in a series of three lectures. And to, today I'm going to talk about uh, the three written lives of St. Colm Kill. Now, just before we get on to that, I just want to view the sort of dates. Um, traditionally, we, we have a set of traditional dates that people have really believed in for a long time. But more recently, a man called Dr. Dan McCarthy from Trinity College has done really intensive study of the sources, and he's come up with slightly revised dates. Um, and that would suggest that St. Colm Kill was born in the year 520. And the traditional date is the 7th of December. So that means last 7th of December um, was, if you like, the 1500th anniversary of, of his birth. But uh, traditionally, it was he was born in the year 521. So the kind of agreement uh, to get over all of this was that we would have a year of celebration uh, beginning on the 7th of December 2020 and continuing on to the 7th of December um, 2021 this year. So for all intents and purposes, we're in the middle of uh, the commemorative year. Now, Column Kill is uh, honoured all in many, many places. In the last century, uh, Church of Ireland uh, the Bishop, uh, Dr. William Reeves, who was one of the greatest scholars about St. Column Kill in Columba, he did a survey of, um, and he came up with 56 places in Scotland and about 37 in Ireland that were connected or dedicated in some way. But there were also places in England, for instance, Lindisfarne Island, just north of Newcastle upon Tyne, off the northeast coast of England, which was founded by monks from Iona in 635. And it's a really important place um, in the Columban story. Now, Colum Kill's name is mentioned all over the place. I just love this wonderful mural on the side of a, a school up in uh, Greencastle, Castle Greencastle up in North in the show. And I think it's a wonderful uh, piece. But Colum Kill is literally known and studied from Tokyo to Tory, from Moscow to Mahororty and onwards to, Kil to, Kil to Milwaukee. And um, particularly in recent years, there have been lots of people in really these foreign exotic places studying St. Colum Kill, um, doing PhDs, writing books, articles, and so on and so forth. Um, and as I said, Colum Kill is known all over the place. And um, this is a St. Columbus church on, in Manhattan. And um, perhaps more surprisingly, here's a St. Columba, St. Columkill Presbyterian Youth uh, Club in Dar es Salaam in Tanzania. And Dar es Salaam is a 90%, maybe more, um, Muslim city. But there you are, you'll have the St. Columba um, Youth Club. And the, uh, the reason for this, of course, is that in, particularly in the 19th century, wherever both Irish and Scottish, either emigrants and or missionaries went, um, they brought the st story of St. Columkill with them. And in this case, it was almost certainly a Scottish a missionary that brought it. Now, my own connections with St. Columkill are literally, I'm, this is my 50th year for studying St. Columkill. I went to UCD in 1971 as a student, and my tutor there, my, my, my Ija, the word in Irish, um, was a woman from Donegal, Dr. Maureen Wall, some of you might know her, she was from Glen Swilly area, and Maureen Wall was determined that whatever, when we leave UCD, whatever other history we would know, we would know about Colum Kill. And then I went to McGee in Derry, and I uh, worked there, and of course Derry is the centre of Colum Kill. I worked for Derry City Council, again, um, on their museums. And then in 1999, I did a, a, a PhD on the traditions of Column Kill. And I just want to flash through some of my own credentials as where I was in, I ran the uh, archaeological 
Archaeological Survey of Donegal between 1979 and 1983, which almost brought me into every single field in Donegal. And then I've written various books about Column Kill. And most recently, I've just published a book on Adavnon, who was the great biographer of Column Kill. And we'll come back to Adavnon later on. So um, St. Column Kill is honoured in all kinds of ways in artworks. Uh, you, you, I'm sure most of you will have seen many of these on churches and buildings, um, etc., throughout the county, and of course in Derry as well. And of course, his name, Columba, um, Colum Kill, Columba, originating in Latin, the Latin word Columba, means the, the dove. <clears throat> and the dove, of course, is the international symbol of peace and peacemaking. So Colum Kill's name has been invoked quite a, a bit in the last few years in relation to the peace process in Northern Ireland. Um, there are variations of his name, Colum Kill, I've spelt slightly different Column Kill, Callum, in, mainly in, in Scotland, Moil Column, meaning um, the devotee, a person who had their head tonsured in honour of Column Killer, Gilla Column, um, uh, the servant of God, and there are many others. And he has all sorts of epithets as well. He's known, um, uh, uh, here's an entry from the Annals of Ulster for the year eight, in which he's described as Column Killer Kyolach, the musical Column Killer, and also the word uh, in other sources of Column Killer. Kilwer. And there's a quite a well-known song, some of you will know it from Aranmore Island and here in the west coast of Donegal, Cullum Killa And in, 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 the, in the song, all really he does is he's a sort of a valentine. He, he tries to um, introduce a, a, a boy to a girl, um, the spare van. So there are many column killers, and we have to, in a sense, uh, people like me that work on them, have to distinguish between what I call the column killer folklore, the column killer of legends, and hagiography. That's the writing about the saint, the holy aspects of. But then there's what I might call the real historical column killer. And I have to say, sometimes the stories don't quite match up. But um, this is a little verse, it's from the 16th century, which describes, if you like, column, the column killer, the wider column. And it, it, it rhymes in Irish, of course, as well, but in English, 300 churches he founded, 100 were close by the sea, and column, as well as the churches, 300 good books wrote he. Now, it's very unlikely that Colum Kill wrote uh, many books. Um, and indeed, that he, he, he certainly uh, did not found 300 churches. In fact, of all the churches in Ireland, all the very famous ones, we all know about them, Derry, Drumcliff, Kells, and of course, lots of them here in Donegal, the only church in Ireland that we have absolute positive proof that Colum Kill founded was Durrow in County Offaly. And um, there's a famous ninth century high cross there. Column Kill definitely did found, however, the monastery of Iona, E. Column Kill in Scottish Gaelic, uh, they're indicated on your um, map. Uh, just a little, tiny little island off the larger island of Mull, which is, of course, off the west coast of Scotland. There's Iona. And Column Kill comes at a really important point in Irish history. He is on the cusp between what we call the prehistoric period, that is before there's any writing or reading or anything like that, and then the historic period. And history is based on written sources. History is the recreation of the past from contemporary written sources. So um, Column Kill, and indeed, he, I, I should say that when, when Christianity comes to Ireland, it brings with it literacy and hence history. So those three things come to get Ireland at the same time, roughly around the year 500, maybe a little bit before that, which was St. Patrick, but roughly. And those three things, Christianity, literacy, and history, all come to Ireland at the same time. And from the early records, one of the earliest things that the monks did when they went to Iona, when Colum Kill himself and the monks, was they began recording events. They began writing what we now call the Iona Chronicle. And the Iona Chronicle is the only source of history we have for Ireland or for Scotland between about the years 560 and the year 740. And from that chronicle come all the other, what we call the annals of 
later time, some of you in Donegal would be particularly familiar, with, of course, with the Islands of the Four Masters, but there are many, many other analytic compositions. This is the Islands of the Four Masters. This is the Annals of Ulster. And I just thought you might be amused because they wrote down these details, were able to reconstruct that um, these, this, for instance, are the pandemics that occurred during the life of St. Columba. And I won't go down through them all, but we're only able to, to I'm not only able to show you that because the monks in Iona recorded that level of detail. Now, there are many sources for reconstructing uh, Colum Kill's life. And we, you know, somebody like me goes through them with a, the fine comb as we're set, sorting out the facts from the, we might call the fiction. There are two very early mid uh, seventh century poems. And there's also a, a, a poem called the Avra Columcilla. Now, we used to think that the Avra Columcilla was the oldest poem in the Irish language and that it was written in honour of Colum Kill shortly after his death. But recent scholarship shows that the, the language is ninth century. It's not sixth or even early seventh century. But we do have two poems from the mid seventh century. So, and they tell us little details about Colum Killer. But the main source for the lives of Colum Killer, for the life of Colum Killer, are three what uh, text that we call the lives of and li in this sense life has life has a, a technical meaning li life and life uh, saints it was always part of if you like the tradition the christian tradition of if you like as we're recognizing somebody as a saint that they were had a written life made about them and those lives uh, they have some relation to modern biographies, but they really aren't biographies. They're more about extolling the kind of spirituality of the saint. And we have to be very careful then at taking everything in them at face value. Now for Column Kill, we have three written in the Middle Ages, Adam Nons Vita Columba, written in Latin in the late seventh century, then an anonymous, mid, uh, what we call Middle Irish life, the Baha Colum Killa, about the middle of the 12th century, written in Irish and written in Derry. Uh, 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 the Vita Columba, I should say, was written in Iona. And then here in Donegal, the great chieftain, or he, rather he would become great chieftain, Manus O'Donnell, um, wrote a major work, the Baha Chalm Killa, in the early 16th century in Irish. And it's a wonderful text in relation to history of the Irish language as well as everything else. Anyway, they're the three sources I'm going to really talk about today. And um, here we have a page from the oldest manuscript of Adavnon's Vita Columbae, written in Latin by Adavnon on uh, Iona, sorry, uh, uh, that's in Irish, of course, Ilonni, about the year 700. But interestingly, the page I'm showing you, you'll see there are two columns, large letters and small letters. And the small letters are actually a quotation from an earlier book that doesn't survive. And uh, Adavnon calls that book the Liber de Tutipo Sancti Columba, the book of the miracles of St. Columba. And it was written by a man called, called uh, in Latin, his name was Comenius Albus, his name in Irish was Comena Find. And you might just see, just here is his name, Comenius, and he, he's Albus or Find, white. And somebody left out, somebody left out the, um, oh, sorry about that. Somebody left out the Albus, so they had to kind of squeeze it in on top like a kid in, in primary school. So anyway, the point is that the page you're looking at is a page from Adavnon's Vita Columbae, written on Iona about the year 700. The manuscript dates to around the same time or slightly earlier. In other words, you're not looking at Adavnon's writing there. You're looking at the writing of a scribe called Dordania. And that manuscript, Dermot Boynia lived in Iona with um, uh, Columba, and that manuscript is now preserved in, in, um, in Switzerland, in, in, a, in a, a library in Switzerland. But as I say, it uses a quotation from an earlier life. And there are some details, for instance, there's, down here, there's the name of Donald McEdo, Donald Mc, who was a really important Donegal king, but I haven't time to talk about much. But that now the earlier book that was quoted was written by this man here, Khmeina. He died in the year 669, and he was related to various other people. This guy, Lashrain, Seigenya, and Khmeina. All three of those were abbots of Iona. And this, uh, as was um, 
this man here, Fallible. So all four were abbots of Iona. <clears throat> And Falaba was the brother of a man called Finan Raha, who founded, according to the sources, the Church of Rai here in um, West Donegal, in just outside Falcara. And um, they all those people there came from this little kingdom called the Kenyal Duach. So um, Gortahark and Falcara around there, Dunfani, and it's in that general area. Um, now, and there's the a cross at Rye today, a famous cross. Now, Adam Nunn's um, book, uh, Adam Nunn's Life of Columba, um, written, as I say, about the year 700, it mainly describes Colum Kill's life in Scotland. Um, there are some references in Ireland to Ireland, but not very many. It's mainly about Scotland. But here, for instance, is a, a reference to a place in Donegal, South Donegal, Dorsum Tome in Latin, but Drum Tuma or Drum Home, now Drum Home in South Donegal. And what you're looking at there is the oldest written form of any place name in Donegal. That's the uh, what you're uh, what's there on the screen. And uh, here, for instance, is uh, the name of Derry, Arachalgic, the oak grove of Calgach. And he writes that some, Adam Nunn's very interesting. He sometimes writes names in Irish and sometimes in Latin. For instance, here he gives the form of Derry in Latin, Roboretum or Roboreto Calgaki. So he, he mixes both Irish and Latin, and that, that's really important for people studying the history of the language. Um, now, um, the, the Vita Columbia by Adam Nunn, written, as I say, about, the, about 700 AD, um, we have then this manuscript, which is in Switzerland, almost contemporary, but there are some later manuscripts from the 12th century, and they survived in, or they did survive, they're now in the British Library, but they survived in the cathedral in Durham, in um, the great cathedral in Durham. And the reason they did that, they preserved, were preserved in Durham, is that Durham was the direct descendant of the monastery on the island of, of Lindisfarne. I mentioned Lindisfarne earlier on, north of Newcastle upon Tyne. Now, the, uh, too, too complicated to go into, but basically, Durham Cathedral is a direct descendant of the monastery of Lindisfarne. And they had the cult of Colum Kill was preserved there with relics and with manuscripts. And what the interesting thing is that in the Durham 12th century manuscript, there is Colum Kill's genealogy. This is his genealogy. There's him as a father, Fidelmi, and his mother, Ethna, and so on and so forth. And um, this is the only place that that is recorded. Uh, if, if, that, if those manuscripts had to survive from Durham, we simply wouldn't know those details. They're not recorded anywhere else. Um, and when you turn that manuscript, as it were, into a table, you get this. Here's uh, uh, Colum Kill's father, and then his mother, Etna, and then Columba and his brother, Owen, and then his sisters, Sheena Chivna and Minkula. And um, uh, uh, I, I should say that his father came from the people called the Kenya Connell, who, of course, give their name to Chirchonel, and um, there's been a lot of confusion about, if you like, the extent of the Kenyal Connell kingdom, but it essentially what began, and the date here is about 550, they, it began in East Donegal in the valley of the lower, the lower valley, the lower Finn Valley, and that really rich agricultural land in East Donegal. And then his mother, there are various stories, lots of stories about his mother coming from all sorts of places, Wexford, Fermanagh, Leinster, so on, so on. But in my opinion, the most reliable tradition is that she comes from, a, I think it's slightly obscured there on the screen, from a kingdom called the Corprica of Fanath. And um, there's the Corprica of Fanath. Now, Barton, as you know, is roughly about there. And uh, Fanath, um, the, 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 the kingdom of Fanath, uh, in, 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 in the sixth century, in my opinion, almost certainly included the Garton area. Um, uh, where Colum Kill is allegedly born. And McCrennan, uh, uh, now south of Fanad, but I think Fanad was the name of a larger kingdom in the sixth century. And Dira, um, Kill McCrennan, formerly known by the name Dira Etna, the Oakwood of Etna, is, as of course, just south of that, and be, as it were, between 
what's now called Fanad and the Garten area. His father came from the Kenyal Kunnel, and as I, the Kenyal Kunnel were centered in East Donegal, and this is. Uh, Crohan Hill, overlooking Lifford, has various names, Crohan, Leffer, and various other names. But um, this is really, that was really the center of Kenyon Connell power in the 6th, 7th, and early 8th centuries. And um, of course, it's the very good land of East Donegal. And this, here's Crohan there, and uh, Lifford would be there, and Straban there. And um, that all, every dot on that map is a major archaeological site. So the area is crammed with archaeology, mythology, folklore, so on and so forth. And here you can see a kind of a, a, a map of Crohan here, where the Kenyal Connell column kills father and people uh, uh, started out. And they, as they, they then spread out into other parts of Donegal. And each date on that map is a battle where they, as it were, conquered a particular area. So they start here. Uh, or start here and then spread out and then there's the kingdom of his mother's people almost certainly and um, I, I should go back to so the date in this map is 550 there's Kenny O'Connell in the yellow by 600 they've spread all the way from Derry right down to past Donegal town and by 725 that at their greatest extent including um, uh, west of Milford and so on and so forth, um, and right down to the uh, to the urn. But a famous battle about seven, 789, their power collapses and they're confined south of the, uh, of the Bar Barnsmore gap between Barnsmore and um, uh, the urn. Now, so uh, that's kind of, if you like, the earliest evidence we have from Columba, and a huge amount of that comes from Adavnon's life, um, written in 700. The second life we have is uh, written in Irish, Middle Irish, um, and actually it's a sermon. It's actually a sermon for delivery on the 9th of June. Uh, Colin Kill's feast, feast day. And it was written in Derry, we know that for a certain now, between about the years five, 1150 and 1182. And it be it really it, it starts off by casting Colum Killer in the role of an almost a patron saint of emigrants. And then um, so this is a map of Derry, the oldest map we have of Derry showing some of the uh, monastic buildings, the round tower various churches there, there, sorry, there, another one's down there. I, I won't go into that. Now, Middle Irish life, as I say, written in Derry between about, say, about 1150. It, it's a sermon for delivery. And the structure that it gives is a, a kind of an account of a tour of Ireland, or the northern half of Ireland, the column kill makes. And as he goes, he starts out from Derry, and as he goes, he, he travels around, uh, Raffo down into uh, County Mead and Offaly, and he founds all these other churches as they were on the way, and then back up and back to Tory and um, back to, um, to Derry again. So that's the structure that this has. Now, that represents not the story, if you like, of the church, of the Columban churches of the sixth century when Colum Kill was himself alive. It's the story of Columban church, a church is dedicated to Columba in the 12th century uh, when the life was written. And one of the stories it tells, of course, is that Columba found Derry and he, he had to wait until he got a symbol. And the symbol was that uh, the um, a saint of, of what's now Glasnevin Cemetery in Dublin, St. Movi, sends him a sign that he can, Movi was one of his teachers in the story, and he sends him a sign, and he sends him a belt. And we don't know what that belt looked like, but this is, seems to be somewhat similar. This is the so-called Moilop belt shrine from, it's not, it, it was found in County Galway, but I often wonder if it was really the real one from, from Derry. Um, it dates, dates to about 800. Now, the final, um, life of St. Columba, the third of the three medieval lives, is the life written by Manus O'Donnell in Irish uh, at his, his castle. And the castle was called Portland Three Nawad. It was somewhere in the vicinity of L Lifford and, and Strabane. I, I, I don't think all people 
wanted to be in Lifford, but I strongly suspect it actually was on the other side of the um, the river, uh, the river Finn in the in what is now County Tyrone. But that's har hardly mattered. And by the way, the, the name of the castle was the the Port of the Three Enemies, and the three enemies were the rivers Finn, Morn, and Foyle. Now, the manuscript, the main manuscript of the text is now in the Bodleian Library in Oxford. And the first page, it's a beautiful manuscript, uh, it's a luxury manuscript, and the first page of it has, contains this portrait of, allegedly, of St. Colum Kill. Now, what that actually shows is an abbot of the 16th century, when the uh, uh, manuscript was made, um, uh, rather than Colum Kill as he would have looked in the 6th century. So this is a 16th century abbot, not a 6th century abbot. And we think, we're not sure, but there's a suggestion, and I don't know how you could ever prove it, that the face of the saint here is actually Manus O'Donnell himself, that he, as it were, put himself, he cast himself in the role of the saint. And, you know, that was very common in uh, Europe art of the period. It, um, if, he, if, he, if it is Manus, and indeed whether it is or it isn't, um, this is the oldest portrait that we know of that was made in Donegal. And um, uh, um, Manus, he, he completed the book in 1532, he tells us that, um, and five years later in 1537 Manus became the chieftain of Chirhonald, the, 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 the leading aristocrat, in, in effect, almost the king of Donegal. Um, now, um, he took some time to, to have the book. I, I say he wrote the book, but it's probably better to say he composed it, because in a long passage at the beginning of the book, he, he asserts his authorship, I am the author, he says, which is very interesting um, idea itself in Renaissance Europe. The, we know that in Gaelic Ireland, for instance, uh, it was normal for poems to have an author attached to them. We know the names of the poet, but very rarely do we know uh, who the author, the authors of prose. Prose was considered to be an inferior, as inferior to poetry, and therefore it was, you know, you didn't bother as it were. But Manus asserts his authorship of this work and then he goes on to tell us that he didn't actually write it himself, that he dictated it. And of course, some secretary or other had to actually write the words. But he's very determined that whether he actually wrote it or not, he is the author of this. And that's just a very interesting idea itself in, in, the, in, in the terms of the history of literature, and particularly the history of the literature of the Irish language. And this is what it looks like, the, um, the, the, the manuscript page. Um, and you might think, or you might like to, uh, that the impression um, that this looks a bit like um, the style of a book, a printed book, I mean. And we think that Manus wanted to have this printed. There were, were already books, printed books, about St. Patrick and St. Bridget. And of course, they were the Column Kill, Bridget, and Patrick were the three patron saints of ancient or of a, a medieval Ireland. And um, so they, there were already printed books about St. Patrick and St. Bridget, but there was there were no printed books about St. Columba. So we think that Manus has a great renaissance. He was, you know, we from other sources we know he was a man of the re Renaissance. He had all sorts of new modern ideas, being bringing them into Gaelic Ireland, and we think that he possibly uh, wanted to have this book printed. Almost certainly he himself owned printed books. And printing, of course, you, you know, European printing had only been invented less than 50 years earlier. Um, so it was it, the latest thing, the newest invention of the time. And uh, I'll I talk more about that when I come to lecture number three. But I did a, 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 a translation of the book myself a few years ago. And um, now he, he, the book was written at his castle of Port and Three Nawad, and precisely where that castle was, we're not sure. As I say, a lot of people think, like to think it's in here at Lifford, but I think it's possibly between the two rivers on that 
kind of triangle of land between that's the river Finn and this is the river Morn, and then the two joined to become the Foyle. And I think the castle was as we're in between, but that's another issue. Now, um, uh, I can't remember why I put that on the screen. That's all. I just, oh, just to say, uh, the Manus was a, a member of the O'Donnell family. And the O'Donnells actually started, oh, I don't remember now the reason. Oh, the O'Donnells were originally belonged to the family called the Shilogta. And the Shilogta started as a very small, tiny kingdom up here in uh, where I now live myself in the Guidor area, Guidor Cochinili area. And, but gradually they spread and by 800, they'd conquered quite a lot of, and they're, as they were moving into East Donegal. And, uh, from this map, we can see here's where they start out from. And then by 800, they're down around, if you like, Rafo, that kind of area. And then later on again, they, they push down um, through Barnsmore down into Donegal, now Donegal Town. And later, as the O'Doherty's, the, they're moving down here as the O'Donnells, but as the O'Doherty's, they're moving up into Inishon. So that's the spread of the Shilogta. And uh, they, of course, the area they take over by about 800, or I can just go back to this map here, by about 800, Shilogdo, as it were, are in controlling the territory around Garton and uh, Kilmacrennan and all those places associated with the early life of Columba. Now, Manus O'Donnell, in his great book, he tells us marvelous stories about the birth of Columba. Um, the Middle Irish Library written in Derry uh, in the 12th century had mentioned Garton as the place of birth, but it didn't really, doesn't really tell us very much more. But Manus tells us very detailed stories about the whole area. And um, so Garton is roughly there. Um, and he tells us, for instance, the night before Colum Kill was born, his mother Etna saw a vision of this cloak spreading out all over Ireland. And this is just a, a stained glass window telling that story. And here we have the roses of England, the um, thistles of Scotland, the leeks of Wales, and the shamrocks of Ireland. And the, the idea is that the you know Colum Kill's influence is spreading out all over these islands. Now, um, uh, so this is a detailed map of the Garton area. And uh, if you study um, the stories that Manus O'Donnell tells in his book and you plot them on a map, he seems to be indicating that there was a circular route, in fact, a pilgrimage, which began and ended in Kilmacrennan and wound its way all around the lakes and all these sites that are as closely associated with the birth and the young life of Column. So this is Column, this is a pilgrimage, I, I think a, a pilgrimage certainly of the 16th century, maybe earlier, which honored the birth and young life of Column Killer. So this is about the child Column Killer. It's not about the saint Column Killer. And it began and ended at McCrennan, went wound its way around the lakes through the various sites associated. This is the Latin Akua. Um, at Garton that is often, and in fact, the signposts tell you it's the birthplace of Column Kill, but almost certainly it wasn't. And so far as we have real evidence, the site nearby at what's now Church down the Violent Chapel and uh, is almost certainly the site that it, the medieval people believed to be the birth of, of Column. And this church here from the, uh, at Ballion Chapel, from, from the detail of the doorways and the windows, we think it was built in the 16th century and almost certainly by Manus O'Donnell or, or very probably by him. But of course, there are many other uh, monuments, the crosses, and Manus tells us really detailed stories about many of these, including, for instance, here, uh, an island in the lake, um, where on which there is what's called the Lac de Ganymede, the, the Stone of Chastity. And this was this was described as Column Kill's playground. And uh, anyone, anyone else who went out to play out there or whatever would lose their fertility. So that was a kind of a taboo that kept it free from interference. 
And then nearby is Tolok, or Temple Douglasia, it has both names, Tolok Douglasia or Temple Douglasia. And this is where Columkill was baptized. And then this one, this is my favorite one. This is in Irish called the Cade. Okay, it's on the road from Churchill to uh, Kilmacrenan. So it's one of the last sites on my putative pilgrimage around the lakes. And this, these marks are there, the Cade Imult, the first going of Cal. So these are supposed to commemorate or fossilize the very first walking step, st uh, steps that Colum Kill took as a baby. So that whole area around Garton is filled with monuments relating to the early life of Colum Killa. And Manus O'Donnell tells us in his great book written in 15, or composed in 1532, he tells us the detailed stories about all these sites. And then, then the, the pilgrimage comes back to Kilmacrenan again. And of course, the original name of Kilmacrenan, according to Manus and other sources, was Dira Etna, the oak wood of Etna, Etna being Colum Kill's mother. Now, I have to say that Etna was also a famous territorial goddess all over Ireland. And um, we, you know, when we, we, when we say that Colum Kill's mother's name was Etna, you have to have a slight reservation. But for instance, Lu, Lula Vada, the great god connected with um, Tory Island and uh, Don Luhi, Don Louis, uh, his, his mother was Ethan as well. So, you, you know, we just have to be very ca cautious about saying these things. But at any rate, the, it, the tradition says that that was his mother's name. And then, of course, Manzo don't tell us all about the other places, uh, Glen Column Kill, Tory Island. Um, Maharorty, the cook, Nene, the Maharorty, talks about Derry, um, uh, Raffo, uh, swords beside Dublin Airport, known in Irish as sword, Colin McKilla, um, and Manus tells us the story. Another place in, in Kildare, Moine, or Moon, Moon, Colin McKilla, Moine, Colin McKilla, and um, Drum Cliff in County Sligo, another one of the churches associated with St. Colin Kill. So, um, I, 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 what I just wanted to show you there at the end was that um, Manus O'Donnell tells us these detailed stories. Um, for the first time, we have these written accounts of Colm Kill's connections with all these places. Some of them are historical, others are kind of fictional stories that were, if you like, created later. But Manus O'Donnell gives us a very great um, account of all these stories. And it's one of the great books from Donegal. Um, as I say, composed and finished in the year 1532. It's of immense importance in the history of the literature, indeed the grammar of the Irish language. It also contains, as I said, that uh, portrait as a frontispiece, which is the oldest portrait we have from County Donegal and may very well be a portrait of the man who wrote the book. Uh, Manus O'Donnell himself. So I hope in this um, talk I've given you some um, flavour of these three great books written about Column Kill in the Middle Ages. Adavnon's Vita Columba, written in Latin in about the year 700 on Iona. The Bahaman Column Killer, the Middle Irish Life of Column Killer, written in Irish in Derry about 1150. And then Manus O'Donnell's great Baha Cholum Killa uh, finished in um, 1532. And they're, uh, apart from being great sources for the study of Cholum Killa, each of them in their own right are major works of Irish literature. And I think we can be all very proud of them. So uh, thank you for your um, attention. And in two other lectures in this series, we'll pick up other aspects of the story of St. Cholum Kill. Thank you.